G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Gaijin have once again proven that they know nothing about balance, nothing about battle ratings, and nothing about how to curate a good, balanced experience for you, the player. Gaijin have released some uh, new proposed battle rating changes for September 2022, and again, they demonstrate a fundamental lack of understanding of the battle rating system, compression, and their 1.0 BR spread. Today, we're going to have a look at the matchmaking changes, we're going to have a look at the changes that should have gone through, and of course, we're going to discuss the all-important question of decompression. Gaijin have a good system here. They have potential, but of course, they just need to know how to use it. There's a fundamental reliance on statistics with the War Thunder Matchmaker, and this leaves out a couple of big points. There are certain planes that are simply not played as often, and so their data is harder to verify as accurate. There's a classic example of the Italian CL-13 uh, CL Mark IV. This particular plane is essentially equivalent to the A5 Sabre and was taken out by a squad of four who were really good at the game. They played it, they got a 4.0 KD, they sweated their asses off, and the Gaijin's planned battle rating changes ended up putting it at 9.3. Of course, an A5 Sabre at 9.3 makes no sense. The A5 Sabre could almost go down to 8.3. In fact, the A5 Sabre in the uh, American tree is an 8.3. But the CL-13 Mark IV, which is slow as balls and a pain in the bum to fly with very poor armament compared to its competition, is still sitting at 8.7 to this day. Gaijin has a fundamental reliance on manipulating the data based off what they think to be the average player. And the average player doesn't always exist in these areas. So you have a couple of fundamental gaps. There are some planes that just don't get played. There are some planes that get played way too often. And there are some planes that get played by people that are really good, or perhaps by players that have, uh, you know, acquired their vehicle a long time ago and have since vastly improved at the game. On the other side, there are players that have bought a premium plane and absolutely destroyed it. Played it like shit because they don't know how to play the game. And of course, these planes also receive statistics-based matchmaking. Today, we're going to have a good look at some of these planes and we're going to have a discussion about where they should go. How often should statistics be used? I always talk about this whenever a new set of battle ratings come out because I believe that this is the important mistake that Gaijin have made in the implementation of their battle rating system. A couple of planes stand out to me. The first one is the good old SU-11. The SU-11 sits at a battle rating of 7.0 and is essentially a 7.7 .7 level plane. Whether it's because the performance is so good that people keep flocking to it and buying it, therefore being a good cash cow for the developers, or for it just not getting enough plays and being a bit of a hidden gem. I personally wouldn't consider the SU-11 to be a hidden gem, but uh, it is one of those planes that you don't see very, maybe you don't see very often and therefore doesn't get accurate statistics. On the flip side, it could also be a plane that's played by really good players and really bad players, giving it skewed statistics where it otherwise shouldn't. Either way, there are some planes that should be judged on performance alone, and these are the planes that don't get the plays that you otherwise would hope. There are plenty of planes that haven't moved in battle rating for years. One of the good examples here is the de Havilland Venom, the Venom FB4. It sits at 8.7 and is weaker than a MiG-15 BIS, and has been weaker than a MiG-15 BIS for the course of about five years now. The Venom FB4 should probably be 8.7, Yet it still sits, sorry, it should be 8.3, 8 but still sits at ba battle rating 8.7, facing things at 9.7 that we'll get to in a moment, but are mostly power crept out. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like for me to make a video on an issue that I believe to be really important, and that is missile power creep, let me know, of course, in the comments below. I find that this is one of the issues around this sort of battle rating, this 8.7 through to 10.7 where you have planes that just have really potent missiles at such a low battle rating. And this is a key issue. Where do we put these planes? 
They have such great killing power, but of course, if you can't get the nose on target, or if you just commit to a head-on and don't know how to use missiles, or alternatively, if you go and hunt ground targets and are not interested in the air-to-air -air combat at all, where do the statistics put you? Where do these statistics of these players count? Do they count at all? Should they count at all? There are plenty of questions that need to be raised that Gaijin haven't answered in the last 10 years. This type of stuff has been going on for the life of the game, and we still don't have any improvements to the way battle ratings are addressed. Should it be the average player? Should it be the above average player? Maybe the top 30%? Maybe the middle sort of upper quarter? Who knows? Let me know in the comment section below. Should it be the average player that, de de that determines how these battle ratings should be made? Because you get planes like the SU-11 that are of such low battle rating that you end up with, you know, a, a sort of black hole. It ruins the matchmaker. Another good example here are planes that are just flat out shit. And that is, of course, most of the French tech tree. Common France L. We have here Mystères, Super Mystères, Baragons, Oregons that are just never played because they are superseded. They are just flat out worse than planes that are at a lower battle rating. These are planes that just get shut out of the matchmaker. And these are shut out of the matchmaker in their droves. There are plenty of those Yak jets that are in the same basket. A good example is the Yak-23, 8.7. It's not a fast plane. It has great energy retention. It has great turning, but there's pretty much nothing for it at 8.7 when again it faces 9.7s. The Yak-30D, I believe, to be in the same position here. It's a quick plane, but of course it compresses at high speeds and it isn't really that much uh, faster than any of the other planes at its battle rating. In fact, it's one of the slowest, if not the slowest after the Yak-23. There are plenty of planes that I believe should be moved to a lower battle rating that simply don't get played enough, or planes that get played so much by such bad players that their battle rating is completely torched, like the SU-7, a theoretically Mach 2 capable plane that sits at 9.3. There are some planes that are subsonic at 9.3 that don't get to, to be nearly as fast. It's ridiculous, and I think that there should be some sort of change that goes about to rectify this in some sort of way. I think there should be a little bit more human input to this, and I think that that is the most important thing to take away from these battle rating changes. Speaking of which, it's about time we actually have a look at them. A10A late, going from 10.0 to 10.3. This is good. This is a good step. The A10A early is also going from 9.7 to 10.0. Again, a good first step. These planes have excellent armament. They have excellent weaponry. They have good amount of countermeasures. They have a decent turning circle. The only thing these planes really lack is speed. And to be honest, it's a ground attacker. I believe a ground attacker should be focusing on those ground targets. They shouldn't be dominating the skies. And as a result, it should be a little bit harder for you to play the A-10As in Air RB. In Ground RB, go for your life. And I honestly don't think there's going to be much of a change moving the A-10A late all the way to 10.7. And frankly, the A-10A early at 10.7. What are you going to do? Not take it up to top tier? Most people probably do. And at 10.0 you're probably using your standoff weapons anyway. Things like the, uh, the, the Mavericks. And you might be even using long-range rockets. You might be bombing from a fair way out, or you might just be using drones to ruin everyone else's fun. But that's beside the point. I think the A-10A is way too strong at 10.0 for Air RB. And of course, I speak in a solely Air RB circumstance because that's all I play. That's all I know. And so... I am only really comfortable commentating on Air RB. But for Air RB's sake, I believe the A10A is a good 10.7, even maybe even an 
Those four M9Ls are absolutely deadly, and the sheer amount of flares it has basically puts it on par with the Harrier GR7. And the Harrier GR7, whilst being a better ground attacker overall, or, or is it the same? I, maybe it's the same. Let me know in the comment section below, because I'm uh, not really used to using the GR7 just yet. So those of you who have, let me know about its armament, let me know about its capabilities. But of course, there's about a 600 km per hour difference between the Harrier GR7 and the A10A late. They have a comparable number of countermeasures. They all have four AIM-9Ls. The Harrier has 25mm cannons and the uh, A10A has 30mm cannon. Of course, you get more ammunition with the 30mm, but that's beside the point. These planes are quite similar, and yet they have such vastly different battle ratings. And it makes me wonder why. It makes me curious as to why these planes are so vastly different from each other, yet they're so much like each other. They're basically the same plane? Or is that a stretch? Let me know in the comment section below. But to see the A-10A go up in battle rating is an excellent first step. Of course, with Gaijin, it's one step forward and two steps back. On to the bad changes. The F3H2 and the F100s going down from 9.7 to 9.3. This provides a compression in the matchmaker. And you might think, well, the maximum battle rating is not going down. But if we have a look at the whole situation, the F100D sits at 9.7 at the moment and can therefore see all the way up to 10.7. 10.7 is a bit of a dead BR. There are a couple of F104Gs. There are perhaps some uh, American planes. There's the A7E. And you might come across the very rare Pepe 10.7 F104. Maybe not in the American tree. You've got the one in the German tree, and I'm pretty sure there's one in the Italian tree. At 10.7, you also have the J35D. Of course, if you come across these planes, you're going to get absolutely railed by them, but they're such a rare Pepe that you don't ever see a full up tier. It's quite rare. You normally see an up tier to 10.3, and this is where the problem lies. Because the matchmaker has been forced so close together, planes like the MiG-21MF at 10.3, the MiG-21SMT, the uh, SPSK all the way down at 10.0 are so close to the F-100s in battle rating, but so vastly different in performance, these planes absolutely stomp all over the poor F-100s. I think the F-100 is a good example here because I personally believe the F-3H can hold its own. It's got... It is more of a side grade, yes. But I think the F-3H has that turning ability that allows it to hold its own. So let's focus down on the F-100s. The F-100s are good planes. They have lots of utility. They are very easy to use. They are fast at sea level and they are decently fast at altitude. The F-100 has good AOA, which means that in a dogfight, if you get the upper hand against another 9.7, you will more than likely win most of the time. The only thing that is superior in every way is the MiG-19, which can pretty much do everything that you can do, but better, with the exception of guns and missiles. The uh, F-100 is, in my opinion, a great 9.7. The problem is it just gets shit on by the planes that it is up-tiered against. And you would think, well, that's a great idea. Just down-tier the plane, and you won't be facing those planes. But that's where the problem lies. The MiG-21MF and the MiG-21SMT, which are the primary culprits here, are 10.3. So by putting them down at 9.3, you're not actually fixing the problem. You're just creating an extra issue in allowing the F-100s to face 8.3s. Things like the Canberra, things like the Mystere, you're basically killing something that is already dead. These planes that are already shit are going to become more shit, and it's going to be harder to play planes like this. I've just noticed the F9F-2 at 8.3. The F84F thunders shit at, at 8.3. It's baffling to see that a plane with such a low battle rating can face another plane that is of such high caliber. It truly baffles the mind because you're not actually fixing anything. You're just creating an extra problem 
in a realm that is separate. You're introducing something that should not be introduced to that battle rating. There's a reason why the other planes around it got down tiered. The MiG-15s the MiG used to be 9.0. There are several Sabres that used to be 9.0. And because of the continuous compression and the top-down battle rating approach that Gaijin has taken to their balancing, you find that this issue just compounds itself over and over and over again. These problems will never get better with the attitude that Gaijin is taking to these changes. By continuously compressing the matchmaker, you're basically playing whack-a-mole. You hit one on the head and a new one pops up. And in this case, you're not even properly hitting the mole on the head. You're just sort of giving it a little tap and then it's just going to shit back in your face. This is the problem that where Gaijin either doesn't play their own game, don't see the mistakes they're making, or is making some other critical error where they're lacking critical information. Gaijin really needs to have a look at this and think about their choices properly, instead of letting an algorithm do the work for them and then wondering why the result makes people angry. These changes could potentially be so much more positive. There could be a decompression of the matchmakers where you have these sort of meta BRs and they're becoming more and more meta because there are one or two planes now instead of three or four that could stand up to the might of something like the MiG-19 or hell, the Harriers or whatever. You name a battle rating, you think about the top plane and then you think about number two and see how far behind number two is from number one. It's ridiculous. And the way Gaijin is approaching this is making it worse. And when it's worse, fewer people enjoy it. And when fewer people enjoy it, more people just fuck off. It's not going to end well, and it needs to be addressed. This is something that cannot go on. The alternative is extremely simple, a bottom-up approach. You look at the battle rating, and you look at the plane that is absolutely raining shit on the F-100. And that's the MiG-21 SMT, the MiG-21 MF, other planes that are of a similar caliber to the MiG-21. There are plenty of them. Let's have a look through the tech tree. We can already see a uh, MiG-21 SPSK in the German tree. For Japan, we have the F1 with four AIM-9Js. With France, we have the Mirage 3C and the Mirage 3E. And of course, we have the F8 Crusader. These are great 10.3s, but they're great 10.3s because they shit on the 9.7s and they shit on the 9.3s. And this is where the issue lies. If these planes were 10.7, and if we had some decompression, we had an 11.7 where all the 11.3s were moved to 11.7, and all of the 11.0s were moved up one, and all the 10.7s .0, were moved up one, we could actually make this battle rating flourish. You wouldn't have like two or three different planes playing in the same lobby, and that is it. You would have so much more than just your garden variety MiG-21 MF and whatever premium people decide to buy this patch. Because of course, when they purchase the premium, that's what Gaijin wants. And when it's purchased, they're going to play it for one game, realize that they've made a mistake, and realize that they can't refund it, and that's it. Money's spent, the damage is done, and the plane is never played again and the matchmaker just slowly withers and dies. This is not the way I want to see this game go. There are plenty of planes. I'd, I'd like you to think about a jet at 8.7 or 8.3 or 9.7 or 9.3 that you haven't played in like six months because it's just constantly being shit on. I'll tell you one that's my favorite, the CL-13B Mark VI. I just can't play it anymore because I keep getting shit on by planes that have all aspect missiles. And of course, I'll make a video and I'll talk about it. But this is one of the planes that just sort of dies in the ass because there's nothing for it. I can't play it because there's just too much difficult, or too much, sorry, too much difficulty in playing this plane. I don't want to get uh, like Matra magicked by A5Cs from space. 
I don't want to get AIM-9L'd in the face where I literally have to switch my engine off from five kilometers away in order to stop getting shot down from, a, from an A10 because Old Mate has just bought his first premium and he loves Murica. These types of changes, whilst they're probably great for Gaijin's bank account, are terrible for the long-term player base. And they're terrible for the people that want to stay and want to populate the game servers. You can't just force the hand of the player base and expect them to not despise you. There has to be some give and take. And whether that give is a little bit of alleviation in the form of decompression or in the form of, you know, less pay to win planes like the SU-11, then so be it. Because the long-term health of the game will be much better. And every time battle rating decompression is made, people love it. People come back to old battle ratings. People play the planes that have not been played in months. And you get variety. You get fun. And it restores a bit of that unique War Thunder gameplay back to War Thunder. Anyway, ladies and gents, that's all the changes that I really want to talk about today. There are a couple of others that are a little questionable. Again, like the F-89B going down. But I just see these as basic cash grabs. And of course, the typical statistics playing into Gaijin's hands and making them look like complete idiots. But thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. If you want to support the channel, head to the description below and uh, there's plenty of stuff. But leaving a like is, is all that I need. Your support has been grac graciously appreciated and I sincerely thank you all for watching. Take care and I'll catch you next time.